Hello, this is Lee Matney of the Linda Matney Gallery. This is a recording of the Zoom event from May 10th, 2021 with Margot Newmark Rosenbaum and B. Sidney Rouse in conversation with John Lee Matney. Born in Los Angeles in 1939, Margot Newmark Rosenbaum earned her BFA in painting at the San Francisco Art Institute where she studied with Richard Diebenkorn and El Elmer Bischoff. She earned her MA at the University of Iowa where she also studied photography. In 1966, she married Art Rosenbaum, also an artist and musician. She moved with her husband in 1976 to Athens, where he began teaching at the Lamar Dodd School of Art at the University of Georgia. Over the years, Rosenbaum has collaborated with her husband on numerous projects, most notably photographing folk musicians as he recorded their performances. Later, she began working in large-scale digital photography, displaying images taken in Ecuador and Japan at the 2010 exhibition New Work by Art Rosenbaum and Margot Newmark Rosenbaum in Athens. B. Sidney Rouse is an American artist known for his evocative works examining entropy, illusion, and personal acceptance. A self-taught photographer, painter, sculptor, and filmmaker, his creative practice began as a form of comfort to, during his departure from the Mormon sect and grew in reaction to his secular transition. Utilizing mirrors, water, and illusory compositions, Rouse achieved surreal imagery entirely through analog techniques, a practice he describes as outsourcing to nature. For this reason, he is as much a technical innovator pushing the boundaries of ordinary material as he is an artist in pursuit of a sincere creative expression. So, Margo, this is your dark room. I guess it's in the 70s or something. Can you tell us more about this? Yes, that was, let's see, that was uh, probably about, I don't know, early, uh, late 70s. Uh, uh, let's see, wait, let me add, it was after 76, because we moved here in 76 oh. and, built, and built a dark room in our house. Um, and it was probably maybe about 79, 80, something like that. And the hot water heater blew up or something and water went all over the place and got on my my um uh, film strips and i hung them from a clothesline in the, in the dark room in order to try to have them dry out but i also brought down this mirror that i had a, a self-portrait photograph black and white phot photograph behind that i had glued behind the mirror and it scraped through the silver on the back of the mirror to make it make it as an image an art image and so see the see the film and then the other um, picture of, of me in the mirror so um, i'm fascinated by this picture in the mirror i've seen this before in person and you, you kind of stand in front of it and it'll be your art will be on one side, I'll be on the other side, and kind of, you kind of interact with that. It's kind of, uh, Whoa. So wait, were you saying that you scratched off the backing on the mirror? Yeah, it was actually the mirror was a little bit scratched off to begin with, and that sort of maybe what inspired me to, you know, to actually do that. Because That's was, incredible. Uh, That's like the exact technique I've been working with. That's what, I'm sorry? That's the exact technique I've been working with. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Is, mixing reflections and mirrors with what's placed behind them and then you kind of like scratch off where you want to see through and then photograph them as one do you have do you have uh, examples of that yeah yeah i think they're in the, the slideshow that's just so crazy that we happen to both do that yeah. that's remarkable well here's the uh, picture here's what it looks like in person and, and this Whoa. Is that's incredible so here's your, so this is, I wanted to show your dark room, you, the one you work in, Sydney. This is the one at the Linden House Art Center, I believe. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's right up the road from where I am. And then uh, it's a really nice lab there. And then I have a picture of one of your photographs you just came out of the dark room. But this is, Margo, this is actually an example where um, the flowers are reflected in the mirror. And then um, my friend, I just like scratched out the center of the mirror and then she's placing her, her face behind in the center. And then I photographed them as one. Uh -huh. So very similar. That's so crazy because I don't know many people that have ever experimented with that. That's cool. I didn't experiment it with it very, I mean, that was a really kind of it. I did it, that piece and I really didn't make like a series of them or something. I see. Yeah, it's an interesting, it has an interesting right. look. 
I do sure. a lot of reflection and other things in other mm -hmm. ways. Yeah. I feel like it has a specific look too, like more so than Photoshop or anything like that, where you have to like physically scratch off the backing. So it almost has like this cross hatching. Yeah, look it's almost like, it. almost like print, a print sort of, but it's not. Yeah. I mean, it's more like you would do for us in an intaglio. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, that's like I did the Silo series that I did most recently is an entire series exploring um, that mirror technique. I will show yeah. that in a minute too. Okay, that's okay. awesome. Oh, yeah. so this You're is one of your, you know about all these things. <laughs> so this is the most recent piece by uh, so Sydney. So can you tell us more? And I'm seeing a, a, a kind of an intersection with, with hands. I think both of you use hands to uh, in gestures in your work. Uh, yeah. Institute to that. Uh, can you yeah. just talk about this piece a bit? Sure. Well, this is actually the most recent photograph I've taken. And um, it's my grandfather's hands. He's 93. And we've never, yeah, he's, he's gone through a lot and worked with his hands his entire life. And several of his fingertips actually got like severed and had to be reattached. So some of them kind of like bend in interesting ways. And I was, I've always thought he had the coolest hands and um, as a child, I was obsessed with hands and I have like hundreds of pages of just like, I would just draw hands for fun. And I feel like I'm, I'm coming back, you know? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm really interested and I like to be able to look at the hands and, you know, guess it, like if someone's right-handed or, or left-handed. But um, yeah, so I took a bunch and at the very end, I asked if he could, you know, grip the backdrop. And so it kind of create these, these wrinkles and then um, the light, um, I felt like it just needed something to kind of balance it out. Otherwise, it's just two dark things and then one white thing. But I felt like the, the light kind of provided this balance. And that was actually created in the dark room. Um, I just laid a tiny, like tiny, tiny pebble on the print and then just dodged it. And so it kind of had a glow. Um, I never really thought about doing that until... Um, Remember we talked about the Fan Ho image, mm -hmm. Lee. Do you happen to have that one? I didn't put it. I, for, I didn't put it in there, but I. But oh, it's okay. Yeah, Mario, do you happen to know the the Fan Ho image is called Approaching Shadow, and it's like this big wall with a diagonal shadow, and then there's a tiny woman standing at the base of it. No, I don't. I'm not familiar with it. Okay. Well, I was watching this podcast where it was showing that image, and I was like, wow, like the patience for him to find this building with a perfect shadow and you know take it right at the moment and everything and then they said in the dark room he actually just placed you know he did so this yeah is the image so, of home, but yeah. Oh, yeah can you see so, that yeah i could see that so the diagonal line with the shadow was actually just added in the dark room and it's like this iconic image and i was like wow like you know you can truly change an image in the dark room it's almost like Photoshop before Photoshop, but because it's organic and in the dark room, it has that great look. And so when I saw that image and I understood that he had added the shadow and that, that makes the entire composition to me, I was like, oh, like I would like to experiment with, you know, adding my, in my own elements in the dark room. And so that's kind of like my backstory on that. But I took that on a family trip to visit, um, it was my parents' 50th uh, wedding anniversary. And so my grandfather was there and I, I rarely see him. And so I was able to collaborate a little <laughs> bit with him. So uh, it's great. I kind of remind, I, had a, I did a shot when I was a teenager of my great, great grandfather's hands with holding a hat and he was about okay. 90 at the time. And so this kind of, the, kind of in my yeah. mind. That kind of Do you have one of those? I don't have that. I should have put it on there, but I don't. Uh, uh, okay. I can put it into the uh, blog on this. Okay. Cool. Um, so, okay, this is a picture you did of uh, uh, Elaine de Kooning at, at a uh, uh, lecture in UGA. Uh, just in her a studio that she was using. Is it in a studio? Like her, her work behind her. And, and, and I kind of like the way, you know, you, you really pinpointed the hand too, you know what I'm saying? You, you're looking, I know she was doing that, but it was kind of like, that was what you decided to photograph. Okay. But what did we, what was that gesture? What was that kind of, why did you like that for that picture? 
How did you? Well, um, I had a number of different shots I took. I, I guess I just liked, I sort of liked the way it just sort of blocks the, the figure's head, I guess. And I like that. I just like the looks of the way the hand is. But I like the expression of her face and so forth. And uh, the kind of a lot of photographs that I take are are done out in life. They're not, they're, and they might have a lot of different movement and or emotional expressions. And so, consequently, I don't really have control over them. I can just keep shooting and and edit out the ones that I like. Mm -hmm. I think even when you're doing it, working in the studio, you're doing something kind of the same way. Similar with the, the you know, editing. Yeah. That's wow, that's a great photo. So is that Willem de Kooning's wife? Yes. Is that who that is? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. That's wild. I didn't know that they came to UGA. Was it just a visit or did... She was did she... at an odd chair for three years in, uh, in 1976. So I guess... 1979. Oh, wow. She was back and forth. But she was, I mean, she, she was very, she was wonderful. She was very engaged with the community of the artists and uh, uh, it was really a, a delight to have here. Wow. Yes. Um, so this is another piece. Um, I, I guess both of you know, uh, well, this is uh, Philip Gustin and Jim Herbert. And I was, yeah. and I was thinking about this piece you know, it's kind of like he's talking about something with his hands. And it was kind of an interesting. Uh, can you tell us more about this piece, Margo, and and what the circumstances around it? Well, they were just talking in a street corner in downtown Athens, and you know, I can't remember exactly where where it was. I sort of you know, try to look at it, and I can't quite place it. But uh, <laughs> um, uh, he was down here. Phil, Phil Gustin was down here to give a talk. He stopped off here actually, and on his way, I guess, up from going back up toward the uh, north from Florida. And uh, um, he was intensely talking about something, and this happens to be a moment of rest in the talk. Mm -hmm. So, for things like this, do you? Do you kind of just pick it up and take a photo or do you kind of like announce at the beginning you may be taking some photos so that they kind of know what's going to happen or? I often will ask for permission, but a lot of times I don't. I'm really kind of, it depends on the situation and I honestly can't remember whether I asked to take permission for this or not. Yeah. Yeah. Because like for the first time I'm trying to, I feel like I've always created an image like in the studio I think about it I buy a lot of things and then I'm like have a backdrop and I, I create you know these images and for the first time I'm trying to just like go out and just take pictures of people or dogs barking or anything like that and I'm starting to realize like I'm starting to think for the first time like do you do you always ask permission like is it you know um it's, it's definitely a question um uh, Penny uh, Noah. I don't know if you know Penny Noah, but you know her? I don't think so. Anyhow, is a photographer. Anyhow, uh, he, 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 it's funny. I mean, he's kind of changed from he to she. But anyhow, um, it was David Noah before, and he gave a talk. Uh -huh. He had a, a, a panel discussion on uh, street photography and about whether you ask people permission and that kind of thing at the um, library downtown. I mean, the you know, the um, Athens Library, Regional Library, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago, pre-pandemic. I, I don't remember exactly how far back it was, but he was very interested. And he's taken a lot of photographs of a lot of people in a lot of, a lot of situations. He's a good photographer. Mm. Well, did he have any insight into that, or was he just discussing all the aspects of it? Uh, I can't remember. It was a panel, so a lot of people were talking, and I think that I should call him or she. I see. Okay. I didn't notice there's a little another face here too. I think. I, didn't there is. I think that that could have been. I don't know if that's an actual person or whether that's something on on a post. Oh yeah, 
in between them, there does look like there's someone back there. I, didn't, I hadn't noticed that. I, mean, I probably noticed at the time I took the picture, but I didn't notice it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What was your, oh, just really quick. I, I just listened to, um, like it was a documentary about Philip Gustin and I think it was called A Life Lived and it was really great. I wasn't that familiar with his work. Like, um, did you have like a specific impression meeting him? Like, did you like him? Um, what was your... He talked a lot. <laughs> yeah. A lot, drank a lot, ate a lot and died of a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> Just a devouring, devouring presence. No, but he, he talked intelligently. My husband is particularly taken with him. Wow. Okay. Yeah, uh, Art has some really good stories about him too. Uh, that are on the the uh, the uh, first Zoom. Uh, mm -hmm. so There's, yeah, this is a, I really like this photograph of Art. I really, really like the movement in this. That's great. So, so this is one of my photographs of uh, Jeremy Ayers and uh, Ada Scott. At the, I think he called her Ada Pool, and this was done in a studio mm -hmm. in, in the mid nineties, Athens. But uh, at that time, uh, it, I was having people hold props and things like that. So, do you have any qu questions about this piece? Or? I've always wondered what it is that she's holding. Yeah, it's like a. It's like a toy. Well, it's so a funny. toy, actually. Uh, it's a what? I, I would allow people to pick, pick the props they wanted to use, and oh, I see. There, there was a toy, and there was also a, a, a plastic alligator, two plastic alligators that were there. Wow. And so to have them holding that. And then so evidently Jeremy did a, a series of paintings of her with the plastic alligators. And, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, and, and people call this one the William Burroughs shot. They think it looks like William Burroughs in this photo there. Oh, yeah. But anyway, I thought oh, it's it a hat. Interesting it's a hat and what he's wearing, I suppose. Yeah. So, really yeah. fashion. I, I love that photo. That, that William Burroughs. And, he did right. have a hat and, and dressed like that. Yeah. Um, it's very nice. So, it, so she's an interesting character. It's another whole other story about her. So were um, you saying that she passed away not long after this photo? Uh, yes, yeah, she was. She was. Uh, she had made some money. Uh, she was in a video with uh, Victoria Williams for a song called "Crazy Mary," and she made five hundred dollars. And then she, uh, her roommate, shot her. Evidently, so really? she took the money. That's what I heard. So uh, soon after this picture was taken, I think. Nice. But she was, uh, you know, Jeremy would always find these interesting people. Uh, and he, wow. was, so I, he, he had a whole painting series and I think he had stories about her also. Mm. So it was just, uh, yeah, I, I saw that recent article you sent about the, um, the ant that they're naming after him. Mm -hmm. It's pretty wild. And in there, um, I think it was Michael that was saying he had a true, um, like a sincere interest in every person that he met. Mm -hmm. And like, like the way he said that, I was like, that's exactly what it was. Like we go to the gas station and he would like legitimately be becoming like new friends with the person behind the counter. And I was like, man, you just love everyone. <laughs> it's 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 special, have, really special. Yeah, yeah, he seemed to have this energy, this creative energy and you would feel it and it would kind of inspire you to kind of. Yeah and spark your energy. To Absolutely. Me. So let's see. Okay, so, so this is one of your pieces, the uh, silo series. And I have this one, huh. too, these two. So I was talking about these two. The what series? This is the silo series. Silo? Silo, yes. Silo, like S-I-L-O. So, uh, uh, but yeah, these are, um, these are also done with the mirror technique, Margo. Yeah. So yeah, it's like a, I did end up exploring that technique for a whole series, but I just love the look. And you can kind of see like on this one, like where the flowers meet the neck, it has that kind of scratchy right. kind of kind of look. And so the um, the flowers are behind the mirror and then the body's in the mirror. Uh, I see. Yeah, but it's just really fun. You took the silver off the back of the mirror for the whole area where those flowers are. Is that it? Yeah. So actually, the whole top. Off. What? Yeah, the whole top of the mirror is actually missing. Oh, I see. And then, but you don't see it because there's a black 
but a black backdrop behind the model and behind the flowers. So the two blacks just form one black. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. And so this is um, one of my friends. She had like a a black piece of velvet around uh, the waist too, so -hmm. that it looked like it was just hovering. But it's really just all done in my studio. But I just love the look of it because there's something about that cross hatching kind of scratchy look. It's to me very distinct. And it's like, I would never want to, that's like, in what Lee was saying in the, my bio or whatever, it's like, I'm always trying to do it in camera, uh, you know, without digital manipulation. And it's more of a challenge. It's more fun. And I think in the end, uh, the results just like look more interesting. Um, the, the texture of the makeup on the body that you put. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you do this with digital camera or do you do it with film? Mm-hmm. Film. Film, yeah. So it, look, it looks like film. Yeah, I'll do, um, I'll usually do digital test shots because the lighting has to be just right. And it's like almost, it's all done with flash because you need a pretty high flash. And then you, um, it's just like, you really have to make sure that you're getting what you think you're getting. And digital test shots really help me understand what it's gonna look like. And then I'll switch over to film and just kind of um, mimic the settings of the digital camera. And then it turns out Mm -hmm. the way that I saw it. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's what I I did. I started doing when I did digital came along. Before that, I used a spot meter. You have a spot meter and you use that right yeah. with a grade card. And, and, <laughs> yeah. so that's, just, that's great. Uh, so, are there outtakes on this where it, did, it didn't quite kind of do what you wanted? Oh, yeah. A lot of oh, yeah. I have one outtake where she's flicking off the camera, <laughs> <laughs> which, which could be an extra, you know, maybe we'll put that out one day. Um, yeah. But we had all sorts of different ones of of her hands. I particularly like this one because the shadow of her hand Mm -hmm. perfectly aligns with the other hand's thumb and it looks like the shadow is what's cutting off the waist. Whereas on the other ones, you could kind of see the black velvet around or the black uh, felt around her waist. Mm -hmm. And so I just like that the shadow happened to diagonally align with the thumb. Um, So I just, I ended up choosing that one mainly for that reason. And I just like the lighting and like how, um, yeah, like you're saying, like I cover all the bodies in white body paint, um, which kind of helps them pop and have like a textural element. And then also, um, you know, there's different things. Like it's, um, I was really inspired by a lot of the imagery within the Mormon temple, like I described in the, the article where everyone's wearing these all white jumpsuits and you're in a white room everything is just like many, many layers of just glowing white things, um, like glowing things on top of glowing things, which I, th- I think is an interesting kind of aesthetic. And then um, also I'm really influenced by uh, Buto performers, which is like a um, kind of avant-garde Japanese uh, dance performance art or whatever. So it's kind of like referencing, you know, different things. And I know like mimes do white face paint and something, but I just like the look of it. And um, I think for the models too, like if they have any apprehension about nudity or whatever, there's something about being covered in um, white paint or like right now I'm actually switching it out for porcelain um, and letting it start cracking all over the bodies. But there's something where it's like, uh, you almost feel like you're in a uniform or you can you know, do anything because it's like such a surreal <laughs> experience. Well, there's one that we're talking about later called the uh, me, This one was the Moran Temple. This is kind of that bright color you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. So these are my friends out in the field. And um, we just, <laughs> uh, one of their roommates came down in the kitchen when we were all get, getting them covered in white paint and was just like, didn't know what was going on. <laughs> but we all got. I mean, not me, but they all got completely covered. And then I had painted this branch white. And then they lived on this farm with this just like huge field. And then at night we went out there and I had my car, my car headlights so I could kind of get them in focus. And then I was just hitting them with very, very bright flash. And I think as I go forward, I actually want to put like a filter to make them glow even more. But there's just something about that where it's like, people are being reduced to almost like a, a blown out silhouette. 
which I think is like really kind of a beautiful, beautiful look. So, oh, so, so yeah, that's so that's I just really like the fact that it's from your memory and from your experience. Uh, yeah. So, For sure. so, uh, so this is one of the ones you picked of mine. Uh, yeah. So I love the goosebumps almost. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, you know, I like the, you know, working with the figure and I really like the shadow in this one, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah that was kind of a, uh, wow. And this was done in Athens. Uh, uh, it's incredible. Around the same time I had a show in Athens. I left Athens for nine years and came back in 2003. Mm -hmm. This was around this time I was shooting uh, when I was having a show here or there. Yeah. Who is that? Well, it's, her name is Rachel, but it's just, uh, she worked with me quite a bit at the time. Uh, mm. but, uh, yeah, I thought she was a very sensitive mo model to work with. Uh, uh, wow. Uh, I love the lighting. I love how it like, the lighting almost, almost like pages of a book, like it goes from the leg down and then the breast down. So it's almost like a, this perfect shape. And then it goes up into the arm. It's really beautiful. Is it just a single light? Yes, most of my works with single lights. I did, I've done some with uh, two, two lights, but uh, mm. I actually did the one of Jeremy you saw with a harsh light. And that was, a. there's some funny photographs of him commenting on how harsh the light was. It's kind of an outtakes somewhere. Which wow. is just more of a soft light, yeah, yeah. That's so, great. So this is one of Jeremy um, that uh, you picked to look at. Uh, this was yeah. done at Jeremy's house. And mm -hmm. done, uh, beautiful. Yeah, I love how it looks like, um, you know, if you send your film off and then they accidentally crop it where it's like part, it's like three fourths of the photo you wanted to get back. And then it's like, you know, one fourth of the, the previous photo is kind of the aesthetic I thought. Um, I love it. And what's that? Is that like a, what's going on on the left with all that texture? Well, I added that texture in my, I added that to, to it. It was kind of, I kind of made this in response to the, what was going on at the Capitol in uh, uh, the earlier this year. You know, I was thinking of this picture because I've always used this picture. Well, it was early. I made a different edit in 2000 with this picture, and I was showing my work in Washington D.C. area at the time. And I always thought of Jeremy as someone who was—he was, you know, about democracy and about about you know kindness and about being you know a citizen of the world. You know, active. yeah. And, and so, he photographed the um, what were the what was the march that he photographed? I'm trying to remember. Uh, uh, Occupy Wall Street. Yeah, yeah. He had some really great photos from that. So he, I like the expression on his face. He picked all the props for this. Looking. Mm -hmm. mm. And this is one of the last things I did before I left Athens for nine years. And so, and this, so I just really like this picture. There, it was a really nice pieces in the series. And, uh, yeah. What's the gear? The gear in the background. The gear? Yeah, there's all those gears. Well, um, he put that there. It was kind of a. He had other objects in the sh in the shoot. I have another picture from the shoot also in, coming up after Margot's piece, but it's just, um, I, I don't know, it, this was in the book Cool Town by Grace Elizabeth Hale, the one that's on UNC Press, it's the, the, that section of it, it's in the book. But um, I don't know, I think Jeremy used, had a lot of objects, you know, he would have a lot of objects and things. Oh yeah. Was, and then he had, <laughs> had his maps and things and books and unusual things. And so, Around this time, we hadn't talked for a long, quite a while. And around this time, after I had the show in Athens, this picture was in the show, but he had me re-edit the picture to his specifications. I darkened it and some things to it. And mm -hmm. then, you know, then he kind of talked to me about some things. About it. He started, we started corresponding about some of what he was working on. And, uh, I, I love that it's almost like he looks like he's thinking. And then for me, the gears are like a physical representation of that or something. It's like <laughs> they're like his mm -hmm. mind or something. Oh yeah, 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 that's what I thought too. It's kind of like, uh, you know, he, almost like he's thinking about Athens and thinking about what's going on. <laughs> For sure. Like that. So let's see, uh, Margo, I've got this piece of yours, and I was, and I like this because it, it, um, you have the TV set and the picture in the background. Was this planned, or was this something that you? Self-portrait. I, um, it's me posing there, and a, a photograph I took of a friend of mine, um, Irena Woodham. 
who was very photogenic. And uh, <laughs> then there's a uh, part of, you can't see the whole uh, decoy duck that's on top of the television, but this was in Iowa City. And uh, I, I don't know how planned it was. I took a number of shots again and I took the ones I like. I love this photo. That's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, I was gonna ask, like, um, I just love how much, like, how far you go with contrast. Um, no, I, I purposely did that. I mean, when I, when I thought of the title of drawing with light, it was part, partly because I came to, to um, painting, I mean, came to photography from painting and drawing, and uh, um, really like to do a charcoal drawing which is like high contrast and yeah like uh, uh mm -hmm. to me yeah do you shoot uh technical question do you shoot like triax or like a specific film I that used to use uh triax 400 okay that's all i shoot with now i love it it's very contrast yeah use that um so um no, I really love this picture too. I just love the, the contrast also and how dark it goes with the TV set. You've got this reflection here. It's the portrait and within a portrait. You know, you, that's an kind of... I like the fact that I was so much younger. <laughs> <laughs> I also love that that picture in the background. At yeah. first, I wondered if that person in the picture was actually, it was a mirror and that was the photographer and then oh. taking a picture of the person sleeping. And then I realized it was a self portrait and I was like, oh, you know, it almost looks like it could be a mirror or something like that. <clears throat> um, we, I've, I've self published a book uh, drawing with light. And I forget what I was gonna say. I, I think the picture of that, that, that woman is in, is in the book. Uh, without okay. being in, in the composition, um, it's, a, it's its own composition. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, this was another one I shot at Jeremy's house. I wanted to show you this one, and this shows more the props. So let's yeah. see. Okay. So this is another one of my pictures that you I can love. See. This one. I like that one so much. I love. There's so much going on, but I love the bald head with the ball. They kind of mimic each other a little bit. And then also oh, almost like later you notice the person in the bottom left handing it, handing it to them. And then the blown out sculpture in the background is like awesome. I love that. What's the backstory on this, Lee? Well, this was taken in, taken in uh, Siloam, Georgia, which is like 30 okay. minutes outside of Athens. On, I guess it's on I-20, you know? There's, yeah. no, there's nothing in the town except like a Texaco station and. Uh, uh, Whoa! Because of Hardy's there, but it looks pretty fancy, yeah. So, but this house was unfinished in the middle of the, nowhere. But some people I, I know if they asked, I just I set up a shoot. I wanted to do a shoot, so we we set it up at the house. And... Yeah, were you trying to get this shot, or is this just like uh, randomly kind of happened as like one of many many photos? Or uh, it was quite a few photos. I I you know I was trying to get a shot there, definitely with the shadows and the ball. But um, this was taken a when I was having a show in Athens. So this was in the 2003 or four when I was shooting. Good That's shot. when I came back on this one. But I was not, uh, but that was one of the ideas I was trying to achieve with that, with the shadow and the, and the. Oh yeah. You know. I like, I like the woman in it too, reaching up. But at first mm -hmm. I just uh, I kind of, you know, discovered the hand, her hand. I was like, where's that hand coming from? And then I could see her mm -hmm. shadow. Right. Wow. Let's see. Yeah, it's a great shot. And that, I'm guessing that's on film too. Yeah, that's on film. That's on ACPA film 25. So this is your piece, uh, uh, Sydney, uh, uh -huh. Cut Your Ribbon. And it's a triptych. We have the two here. Yeah. I was really, really pleased with this. This is actually a different um, kind of technique within what I was talking about before. Um, yeah, that's, I'm just really happy that you had experimented with that too, but um, so it makes sense. But this was um, the similar um, mirror technique, except I did, um, it would kind of evolved where um, 
before I would get mirrors and then, you know, try to remove the backing. And it was like really thick and very difficult to get off. And it took forever. It's just like, especially with like the thick mirrors, it's very difficult. And then you also only really get one look, you know, you just get these scratchy removal marks. And my thinking was, I wish these could be more organic. You know, I wish that I could have, you know, these removed spots be whatever I wanted or whatever. And so that's, this is when I first started making my own mirrors. And so I started buying, um, you know, pieces of glass um, from the Habitat Restore for like $2. Um, Cause I just wanted cheap pieces of glass. And then I found um, I could make my own mirrors with this reflective spray. And so it was a experiment where I actually laid flowers on the piece of glass and um, kind of taped them down a little bit. And then I would spray many, many thin layers of the reflective backing onto it. And then you would, and then I removed the flowers and then when you flip it over, it's a mirror, but the shapes now that are missing are um, like organic shapes, you know? And I was like, finally, like, and it, it was way easier to make my own mirror than it was to remove the backing, you know? Mm -hmm. And I also didn't want it to be so controlled. Like, I don't like making every decision. Like you're saying, like, I like to outsource to nature. And it's like, if I can just lay some flowers on there and not think much about it, create the mirror, remove it, it's kind of... I don't, it's like more letting nature make those decisions. And so the person is reflected in the mirror. The spaces that are missing and see through are the shapes of flowers. And then I did a wall of live flowers behind the mirror. So it's, it's a strange, you can tell, especially like zoomed in, but like, it just looks very strange for, for the reason that it's this combination of weird things where it's like flower shaped, missing pieces with flowers showing through them on the back side. And so it kind of just creates this, this texture and it, it looks like it's almost like an explosion or something, but it was my first time. I particularly like the one on the right. I like, I like being able to see some of the face mm -hmm. and the gesture there. Yeah. There's a third one too, where you can see yeah. the face. Um, but yeah, it just had this interesting look and I was like, wow, like, this is, you know, the next step. And so I actually want to do some more of these. Um, these are the most recent? Yeah, of this technique, this I'd is, say. Love the movement and the dynamics of the movement on both of them. There's that depth, uh, and then also that glowing kind of uh, idea you have. Yeah. Uh, so, mm. this, well, this is one of my pieces. This was a video still that, that I shot. Uh, mm -hmm. It was in a, several exhibits. And I think it was an exhibit in Athens, too. but uh, this is one that doesn't yeah. have the lines on it. Actually, we're, we're taking a lot of long time on these images. Where we have like 15 minutes left. I don't know. <laughs> so, oh wow! That's so crazy. But that. But we'll, um, we'll, so we'll what do you? Fast. We don't have to go through fast, but we can just not say talk about something. So, so yeah. what do you? Uh, so why did you pick this one, Sydney? To is a, I loved it, and I just I was wanting you to talk more about what the actual film it came from was because in our discussions I um, I haven't heard much about your well, film see, work, so I was like, what is I want to see this film? Well, see, yeah, I I have to find the film, but it's on a video. So so basically, what happened is uh, when I was in Athens, um, well, J Jeremy was one of the people who told me about it. But there's this thing called the Videonix MX1 mixer, and mm -hmm. then a Thai camera he had, and well. He never showed me techniques, but I bought the same equipment, and, and I made these in my apartment in Atlanta, uh, in, in when I was in Atlanta, and some of these. This one was done in Virginia. This particular one, when I got back to Virginia, but it's just uh, basically what I did is I, I really like Fellini films, and so you on the image wow. convert it to like a black and white, and then a 24 frame. So it, on the on the screen, it looked like a Fellini. It looked like that lush 1960s black and white. But when you took yeah. it to the screen, it would be this blue effect. And sometimes there'd be lines and sometimes there'd be no lines. This this one doesn't have lines. So I'm wondering if this is done through another kind of still, but this is, but yeah. I, mean, um, I just really like, I would, I would just film, I would, with a video camera, the Hyatt camera, and I would 
and I would just find these models and do this quite a few of them. So this is one of my favorites. And this was there was a there was a show in Virginia at this place called the Peninsula Fine Arts Center, and this was part of that show, and uh, it was the first museum show I was ever in, and uh, the uh, juror was uh, was Eleanor Hartney, who was with Art in America, which was you know it was really nice that the first time they exhibited it. I was kind of shy about, about exhibiting, so this it was my second exhibit ever. <laughs> was it this? Wow. It's uh, that. So and this is another one of them in the series, and it kind of shows the movement. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, and this is a nude you told me you liked. Yeah. So, it's cool. I love the lighting. It's incredible. And like you were saying, like you were photographing all these like super masculine, like or like really cut people and it's like I'm okay. I'm not interested at all in really photographing models as much as it's just like natural bodies and friends and people of different you know ages and ways and everything and I just think they're beautiful and the fact that you they're self-portraits right yeah, yeah this was wow. yeah there was a different time it was back in the you know I was working with models in Atlanta in the 90 early 90s and and then it, it was a lot of male models and it was a different uh it's really unusual scene. I did a lot of black and white at the time and printed for other photographers. So it's really a nice, interesting scene going on. I'll have to talk about it more later, but it's, uh, and then okay. black and white was very nice. Uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, let's see. And of course, I always, I always love the side by side. I think it's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is another one that was in uh, this that show at, at the museum. And this is what I really love. And this was, uh, this was just, I really like this one. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. It almost has like a David Lynch vibe. I love that. <laughs> like, a, for me, whatever. The the red, the lipstick and the eye makeup. And mm -hmm. well, I told her to put very dramatic lipstick. And, and the <laughs> so that was kind of. For sure. Cool. And then, and then anyway, this, this was a flagpole cover. So. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> so that was kind of that. So let's see. Oh, so this is your work. So again, so so this I really like this piece. It's almost like it's the kind of the the face is kind of like yeah like, yeah. This is um same technique but combining bodies. Mm -hmm. So that's actually um I was actually just. I slept at her house just last night. I crashed on her couch, uh, my friend in Atlanta. Um, her name's Maggie Benoit. And um, the, her partner at the time, um, they came over and I was like, okay, like if I can combine, you know, flowers and bodies, um, what about, you know, bodies and bodies and things like this? And so it's this idea of, you know, it's like, what if I plug this thing into this thing? What would that, what would happen? Um, and so I have a couple of these where I'm actually combining two people into one, one body. And so, you know, he, he's of course like the masculine part and then she's actually behind the mirror, but a lot closer. And so that's why the breast looks exaggerated. It's just because- I, I find this compelling, this particular image. Thank you. Thank I appreciate you. that. It almost has a kind of a, the face almost has this kind of, I don't know, this iconic kind of Elvis little kind of look mixed with something else. You know what I'm saying? It's this Yeah. Like a, I like that. I love, I love, I think when you first saw this, you were like, you know, that Elvis photo. And I was like, Elvis photo. And then when I realized what you were talking about, I was like, yeah, it does. It's like, <laughs> it's like the most surreal Elvis photo ever, you know? <laughs> That's awesome. So, and this yeah, was another same, one. I like same this. thing. Yeah, <laughs> combining two people. This is um, Cooper and Madeline. They're um, friends here in Athens. Um, and they have um, incredible performance artists. Um, they do a lot of performances in Athens under the name of uh, Keep a Show. And they're both just um, really great artists and very open to everything. So I like to usually work with a few friends and I just, I work with them over and over and over again, typically. Um, so yeah, that's another one from the Silo series. This is one you were talking about also. Yep, that's a husband and wife combined with mirrors. So the face is actually half, half the wife and half the husband. And then you can see obviously with the breast and then their arm 
that arm on the right side of the image is actually like a weird blending of their two arms. I don't know how it happened, but it's pretty strange. Let me see something. Yeah. Uh, so I, I want to talk about this. We don't have a lot of time, but I want to talk about this. So this was the reflection. I really like this reflection piece. And Margaret, I want to talk about a few of your reflection pieces. I hope we'll have time for questions. I, if we can, we may run a little later so we can get the questions in if you guys are okay with it. I don't, I'm, I'm, I have nothing to do. <laughs> okay. so, um, as as so I really love this piece. I really love it. I mean, you said there was an imperfection in the film, but I think that it really is it's strong, very strong. And yeah, I didn't put it on the reel um, quite right. And so it didn't, it had these like streaks across it, but in this particular image, um, you know, and that's, that's my girlfriend, Alyssa Peace. And um, I just got this point and shoot camera and I feel like it's just changing everything because it's so portable, it has great glass. You can put any type of film, um, Tri-X, I think this was Tri-X. And then it has flash, zoom. And yeah, I just, she was in the tub, just like swishing her hair around. And then I just like stood up and then just snapped a portrait of her. So I thought it was really kind of, kind of beautiful. <laughs> Um, so this one, Margo, this one you did in, in Fortuna. I really love this piece. How did this happen? How did you do this? Uh, I accidentally put the film through the camera twice. And I, <laughs> you know, on the film. And I thought it was great. And it really, I thought it really, really looked like Fortuna. Yeah. It's incredible. It almost looks like it's three photos like the bottom right there's like someone up close and then there's the person walking and then there's the lab it almost looks like five photos in one or something it's a very hilly town <laughs> yeah wow i just love those accidents that really make wild. kind of come together like that i think that's something i've had that happen a couple times where i've, I've this uh made the mistake of putting in a film through twice and gotten good results. Wow. That's awesome. I love it. Uh, it, it, some, it reminds me of a, something that would be in a film or something. It would be a, it, yeah. It, 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 um, and then this one, I really like the, the Amtrak train. Uh, that was, that was, uh, I, I can't say it's totally intentional because it's involving a lot of people, but this was the third or the second time I tried taking a shot from this particular situation. The first time um, I didn't, I, I had one slide I, I liked, but uh, um, it wasn't quite right. And I came back and did this black and right, white one the next time I took that, that club car. Wow. Is this in, where's this at? It's a Santa Fe train. It was uh, somewhere between Iowa and Los Angeles and wow. Albuquerque. I mean, like this is, I don't I can't remember where specifically it was, it was taken, but it, I took a number of trips between those places. Wow. I did, I know we're short on time, but I, one of the questions I really did want to ask you, um, Margo, one, I, I really, really love your work a lot. I love the look of it. And, but also um, I wanted to ask you in terms of like a series, do you, do you typically um, have a series in mind and then you shoot knowing that you're working towards that? Or do you typically just shoot a lot and then kind of assemble it later? I've done both. Um, I okay. have a series of subway shots taken in New York, for example, and that was a series. And then another series that's maybe not quite as, successful but it was of, of people in a museum mm. and I've done horses I've done uh, I've done a number of different series but then I also just shoot all the time and during the okay. pandemic I was doing an awful lot of, of landscapes and uh, from our house and uh, um, mm -hmm. like pictures of our cat oh, yeah. very photogenic <laughs> I think he's very photogenic yeah, that's, oh. another, that's another accidental going through the uh, the, the, the camera twice. The film went. He almost uh, did it deliberately, you know. I think it it really. I gotta try. <laughs> <laughs> so you do the roll, and then you just 
reel it all the way back and then do it again, basically. I didn't realize I'd already done it. And so I put it back in as if it's a fresh <laughs> <laughs> I love it. A long time ago. Oh yeah, this is one of my favorite photographs ever. So cool. Well, this this was in, I mean, it was intentional to the you know in the sense that we I asked uh, um, Finster to get behind the the, the um, um, I forget the word for it the uh, trampoline. trampoline thing. Yeah. Anyhow, and have, have the kids jumping on it, on so that uh, I had had that kind of action and just took a bunch of shots. Wow! And I found one that worked. Which is awesome. Yeah. That cover. It just sums out like sure, like complete southern bliss, you know. <laughs> it's like the banjo and the trampoline and the, the GMC truck. Like it's a party, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's. So, I was like, man, I wish I was there. <laughs> so, and this is another one of your pieces of uh, Robert Wilson from your uh, Iowa City. Yeah. That was an interesting. Uh, in Iowa City, that, that was, um, I didn't set him up to look in the mirror like that, but when he did, I took it. Hmm. I don't know if he did it intentionally, yes, thinking I might shoot it or whether, you know, I, 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 we didn't discuss it, I just did it. Mm. And they were. I took a bunch of them singing, and particularly good. I'm kind of going through some of your pieces just to see some of these, and that's just, oh, this is uh, John Hartford. Yeah. This is yeah. Uh, Davis Baldwin. Davis Baldwin and Bertona. Oh, that's How did you meet Baldwin? Uh, he was in Cortona when I was there, and. Uh, um, I'd come up from where we'd been eating, and he was on a on a um, a, a pat, what a patio, was sort of a, I I guess you'd call it a patio, whatever it was. But it was it was more of a, a place where you look out. It was not a porch. It was a big. It's funny. I I have problems picking up words sometimes. A balcony or something, or it, it was like a like I just can't think of the word. But anyhow, it's episode restaurant and it was the um you know where you looked out had a view you could sit down and, and it was quite large you could go sit down and, and uh, um have a drink or have something to eat mm -hmm. and I, I had come up from eating and he was there and I, I didn't recognize him because i didn't really know what he looked like but i thought he was a very interesting looking person and Whoa. Thought, oh shoot, I don't have a yeah, I really like the angles you put you on some of your pieces. You you know you, it was kind of like that film uh, staying with you, the, the angle from Cortona, you kind of going down. So you, you have you, you work in different angles. It's not really traditional angles all the time some of your work, Mark, or that. Really like, I mean, yeah. this is a different, totally different. I don't different. think about things like that. I just do. Right. Oh. I tend to be quite uh, spontaneous. Let's see here. So uh, so this so is you're saying were you saying something, Margo, about like you didn't have a camera on you or something? I didn't have a camera when I first came up, but then uh, I went and got one uh, eventually, which was not a neat thing to do in Cortona. You better go up a very <laughs> in this very hot sun to go to where we were staying. And I went and got it, and I, asked, you know, I, I did ask him if I could take his picture, and he was he was a very very nice person. Okay. Nice and also very uh, good sense of humor and good sense of humor. really, really nice person. That's great. So these are some of the other pieces. This is Howard Pinsker. I really like that they're so close, such a nice close up of him. Um, yeah. Uh, so you knew. My, my friends and I are about to go to his garden once we can. We've, oh. That's amazing you knew him, but now it's like such a destination to see his, yeah. his garden. It was quite different. That's Irene Piwan, who unfortunately is, is, has died. But that was a work she did when she was here in, in Athens. Oh, right. Yes, I saw this and I saw, well, you looked at this piece. I was thinking the connection, you kind of with the distortion, it reminds me of your piece here, Sydney. Uh -huh. you know? That's kind of that, you know, yeah. kind of thing. And then this piece of mine, I was kind of working with distortion too. But. I love it. So cool. Uh, I love the flex. That's done quite recently, actually. That was done 
I was working on another project and I was in the middle of it. And I said, let's just, do, I'll just do something by myself. Um, this is, I love this too. I love that. It's almost like a whirlpool. That's what yeah, it's, <clears throat> that's my friend, um, Marla, Marla Starr, um, local Athenian friend, really, really beautiful person too. And she, um, you know, I was just, it was a time where I was really just trying to get different looks naturally. And this, we actually made like a mirror cone. So it's like a, almost like a dog cone, you know, that goes out. And so, and then she just laid on the ground and she did her own makeup and then put her face in. And um, it was one of those things where you really can't know what it's going to look like until you try it. Because mm -hmm. if instead of a, like a cylinder, the reflection would just go round and round, but because it's a cone, it actually like stretches outward. And it was just like, when I actually looked at the film, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is so wild. <laughs> well, so I've always so, really liked that one. Well, that's so inspiring. I mean, back in the years ago, go ahead, go ahead Margaret. It's like ripples pulling out of the middle of the pond. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like when you let the, out of a sink, you like let the drain, the water go down the drain, but it's like her own, I think we're going out. You're like, if yeah. You put a pedal in the in the pond. It would and then you'd get these circular things mm -hmm. going out. Yeah, yeah that's, I really love that. I just love that, that that when you're shooting on film, you don't know what's going to happen. I like that. I miss that. I think mm -hmm. it's kind of, kind of it changes that whole dynamic. I mean, uh, and this is more of the silo series that I really loved. Mm -hmm. I really love more, more technique. So in total, it was six images. Um, I worked on it for like about two years trying to get it because these are all live flowers. Mm -hmm. uh, the one on the right has real orchids in it. it was, <laughs> I almost went broke just buying flowers. <laughs> so these these are at the gallery now. We just love them. We have the prints here and we have uh, uh, individual yeah. prints. And it's just, I just look at them every day. I actually have a couple of them in my office and I look at them when I'm working. So, oh, well, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, that and there, uh, you know, this is, we have the smaller, but there'd be more other. You know. So this is, uh, I was thinking about these, the hand pictures, these hand pictures. And I want to yeah. ask you this, this one. So what, is this about uh, racial justice or what was the intent of this one? You know, it wasn't because it's like, I think that we live in times where, I mean, I can definitely see, um, you know, like that being the initial interpretation. And I think that's one of the interpretations that I think is great. Like, um, but really I, I was thinking more just in terms of pure form and shadow. And I kind of thought like it looked like a spider kind of like, mm -hmm. it almost had this like dark element <laughs> to it. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it was really gentle. Like the way I, I picked two people that had very good hands and then some people do jazz hands or they're very stiff, um, but it's very hard to find people that can just have really natural, relaxed, um, you know, hand expressions. And I was mainly just thinking in terms of uh, symmetry. Um, it was part of this little mini series I was trying to do. Um, I called them corporal structures. So I, even from that title, you can kind of tell like, um, there's another one where there's two people colliding and they're kind of like, their arms are sticking out. and it's more just like symmetry and the forms, almost like I was thinking of them like sculptures more so. And then yes. on top of that, you know, there are, you know, you can you can view it racially, but um, you know, there's, there's no one way to see them. Uh, but I thought, it's all kinds of interpretations. It has a, it's like a fine vibration to this, you know, it's very strong. It's yeah. Like, it's something that's, that, that's really perfect for photograph. Yeah, yeah. I love it. And if you look, um, the top hand has like glitter on the nails. I didn't notice that later. It's mm -hmm. kind of an interesting detail. Yeah, yeah we have these on artsy.net, both uh, Margo and uh, Sydney's work are on artsy.net uh, with these. Uh, so this was another, I was looking oh. at this one and then I was noticing, you know, a lot of your pieces show the hands kind of front and center of Margo. I mean, this one of Jeevan, uh, I mean, of uh, the Kooning. Um, do you have anything to say, else to say about this? And this is your son, Neil. Uh, I'm going to show your book quickly at the end. I don't know if we have any questions on this, on this oh. chat. Do you have anything to say about this piece? Uh, uh, I just, that's a charm to it, mostly, I guess. 
Mm. I, I, I'm not very good at talking about visual things. Uh, my <laughs> things I like to think of as talking for themselves visually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the way yeah. I am. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, you know, that's why I'm not a writer. I'm a photographer. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> with like artist statements, I'm like, you know, you try to say something that can't be put into words with visions and then you got to put it back into words or whatever, you know, with visuals. Mm -hmm. So I understand, I can understand that. Well, one, one thing I'd like to say though is that I'm having a show up in New York uh, coming up on uh, May 27th. Oh, the you Mar are. The Marinaro <laughs> Gallery. And it's curated by Tiff Siegfried. Oh, wow. Okay. There was, I, I know that gallery. Well, They're great. So we'll, um, we'll put a link to that if, when, it's, when it's out for you, Margo. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And, oh, wait, Tick Seyfried's, that, that's a local gallery, correct? Well, she had, had yeah, she has a local, she had, that, well, she had one downtown, but now she has one in Comer. Um, but, okay. But this is uh, not her gallery. <laughs> She curated it, the the work for the scale. You know, the photographs are just photographs. So, so this is the book here. And this is, do you have anything, Cindy? You picked these pieces. Do you want to say anything about these quickly? Or I just love all these so much. I love the way they look. Um, was there one before this where there's like the choir yeah. singing? Mm -hmm. the choir. These these two, I just funny. love this series so much. I think it just it's incredible. And, you know, I've always, I always thought it'd be really beautiful to photograph within a church, but I think that I've just always, I kind of wanted to ask like how this, these photos happened because, you know, I would never want to ask a church, like, can I just photograph in today, like today, but it's like, if I became a member of a church or they, like someone invited me to their church, I would do it. But it's just such an awesome, you know, high energy environment. Yeah, you know, I, I asked in the case of the churches, I've always asked. Okay. Yes. That's wild. But I, I just love I love these um a lot. And um with the next image, maybe I should have just read the title. Um when, with the ones with all the, the pieces of cloth. Um I was wondering what those were. Yeah, uh, the foot washing that was on Easter and it was in a church called Pilgrim's Rest, and it was, they're, they're sensational singers. Mm. Um, and, and what were the, what were the, the washcloths you said? The foot washing, you know, Jesus washed the fit, feet of, uh, I guess it was the saints, or he washed, he washed the feet, and they're, and they're reenacting that, that uh, uh, ritual. Wow. And this is, is this inside this photo? Yes, it's inside. Yeah, you can't really tell, can you? Did you dodge the whole top so just pure white in the dark room or was it just a white wall? It was a white wall. You know, this frankly was, it was done in 1978 and I can't remember in great detail. Mm -hmm. I remember more of the, just the general sense of it. Yeah, it almost looks like it's outside because it's so white. Yes, it does. Yeah. It was inside. Wow. I know. Wonderful. Yeah, these are some of my, my favorites. I was showing my friend some of these and she was just mind blown. I really want to buy this book. Um, yeah. I think on the online you can preview it and it shows like 10 images, but I saw on like some of them, it was like page 129 and I was like, wow, like there's so many it's that I need to see. <laughs> wonderful book. It's got a lot of images in it. I have, a, I have an early copy. Awesome. It cost more than I would have liked to have charged for it. That's because we had it. We, we we paid to have it published, and so we could have more control over it. Okay. But I'm not, I'm not sure that we would find a publisher who could publish it. And I'm at a, at such an age, I, I kind of wanted it to come out and not not wait several years to, for a publisher if I could find one. Because boy. Yeah. We, when, you, when you're working with a publisher, it might come up two or three years later. Yeah. 
and it would it could be cheaper. But I, my experience of having my photographs published before is that I, I was very was unhappy with the with the mm. results. So they were usually too gray. So let's see. Uh, they didn't have the they didn't have the good blacks. What? They didn't have good like rich uh, dark tones. You're saying? No, I mean they just didn't have the money to put it. In. And it's the quality of the paper too. So, wow. So yeah. did, you want to, did you want to talk about that other image or the Robert Wilson one at all or the one here? This one at all? Or, yeah. That was part of was part of a uh, performance. And I hate to admit it, but I do not remember exactly what that was. It was just a short little little uh, part of a performance. It was a deaf man's glance? No, it wasn't. It was something that was separate from that. Okay. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> I and really like what it was. I just thought that I didn't really like the photograph. Well, I think your pieces, you're, you know, you're doing performances, but you bring your own identity to it, your own artistic eye. Has, I, yeah. I like to think so. I don't know. I mean, that's the only eye I have. <laughs> so, um, so we I don't look if we have any questions. So I put your pieces here. I put the gallery. I put well, these are pieces we have at the gallery. These are signed prints by uh, Sydney, and they they're at the gallery now. Uh, and then we have the exhibit. We have Neil Rosenbaum's film uh, "Sing Your Troubles By." We have a I want to see that the video here. I keep uh, Grace Elizabeth Hale's uh, "Cool Town" at the gallery because that ha has uh, a lot about Athens, Georgia, and Art and Margot in the book. And then we have uh, not really much about me, but a lot about art. Box set. Uh, the the we have one of the originals that won the Grammy, and then we have the second edition here, and some other folk folk editions and voices and other things here. So that's still going on, and then the show is going on. Thank you for considering the Linda Matney Gallery. Art and Margot Rosenbaum's Journeys in Art, Music, and Folklore runs through June seventh at the gallery. See Sydney Rouse's work in our July exhibit. The task that is the toil.